so you came back uh, or they they uploaded a lot of different rushes right what yeah. is your what is in your thinking process how do you uh you know how do you select the story and how how did you finally you know came with the current storytelling yeah so i, I think at the very beginning of the uh, uh outbreak i think a lot of people like including me i went back and rewatched uh, the, the the movie the narrative scripted narrative movie Con uh, contagion uh, contagion yeah uh, so uh, obviously everybody everybody thought the uh, um, the outbreak could be like a thriller or a thriller film it's like ideally you know i would have like following different group of people, like some are scientists, some are reporter, some are residents, some are medical doctors, tracking them through this outbreak. Um, and, and also, like I mentioned earlier, I really wanted to talk to a lot of uh, some of the early whistleblower doctors and, and to, to figure out what was happening. But really quickly, we realized uh, a couple of things. One is that, uh, you know, uh, it was um, really difficult to get in touch with some of the uh, characters were like really central to the early discovery of the you know early patients and basically it's it would be difficult to track the the earliest outbreak of uh, 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 of uh, in Wuhan um, as uh, since other scientists and other reporters were still having issues even to identify who was patient zero right who was the uh, of the first cover in Wuhan and secondly um, it, we didn't get access to any get access to any whistleblower doctors to talk about the early days until March, and by that time things have calmed down. And then what we what we could do was to film some interviews uh, with them, and 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 then so so um and so um on one hand I could only talk to my co. Uh, uh, co-directors there since they had access to the hospital, really communicate, continue to communicate with them to make sure their filming production is going well on the ground in Wuhan. And at the same time, I think there's a lot of things happening. Um, the, the, the outbreak was be, becoming a, you know, more and more a global pandemic. So for a while, we, we were not sure what was the film? You know, how do we, how do we control the scope of the film? Uh, are we making a film just locally about Wuhan? Or are we making a film more about this global outbreak? So if you're making a global film, that means we probably need more collaborators from other countries. That's why I reached out to filmmakers in South Korea, in Italy, in, 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 in Madrid. And I myself, even though for a while I made plan to, uh, to fly myself back to Shanghai and try to find a way to get myself inside of the lockdown Wuhan. But in the end, I saw it was becoming a global pandemic. I knew it would come to, to, to the US, so I decided to stay in order to film uh, in New York as well. So for a long time, the challenge really was, uh, what was the story we're telling if we cannot tell an uh, investigative story? Or, uh, and, and then, and, you know, are we telling a regional story or versus a global story? Sorry, I'm not sure. I'm sorry, my, answer, my answer went a little bit long. I'm not sure whether I was asking answering your question. Yes. So, so yes. Initially, there are different uh, story, story strands that you could pursue, yeah. right? But yeah, then absolutely. why? Yeah. Why then you stayed in the hospitals of Wuhan and tell um, this story instead of you know the investigative original or you know the thriller yeah. and the others. Absolutely. I, I think it's uh, after I started seeing footage coming from other parts of the world, including, you know, my failed attempt to get inside a hospital uh, in, in New York here. In New York, it's just like I talked to most of the major hospital chains and none would grant me access uh, I, uh, for two reasons, right? I mean, in the U.S., there's very stringent uh, patient uh, privacy laws, and also because the hospitals all belong to big conglomerates, the, uh, they, they are worried about the liability, the legal liability in case the filming crew uh, got infected. So, and then I keep on thinking about how precious, how unique, how emotional the footage uh, uh, from my co-directors uh, was. So in the end, I'm just like, you know what, let's, and also another reason was the more I tracked the, 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 uh, the, 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 the pandemics, 
uh, journeys throughout the world, the more I followed how different countries and different government responded to uh, the pandemic. It just feel like the same Wuhan story was being replayed over and over in different locations. The same stories about uh, inept politicians and the very, you know, at the beginning of how to respond to it. Um, you know, hospitals being overwhelmed and, and populations were super scared. And, uh, and also there are good stories uh, from everywhere about volunteers st stepping up, doctors making a lot of self-sacrifice. So in the end, we just said, you know what? We're just gonna focus on where we have the best footage, which is from Wuhan and using that to tell more like a universal uh, human story since, um, first of all, we could, we could not use my crew to do any investigation and anything we could uncover, any of the interviews we did was no different from what had been already widely reported in news media. So what's the point of us, you know, repeating what's already been uh, reported. So let's do something, let's, uh, because by that time it was very obvious, very little, you know, on the ground footage, visual footage was being shown anywhere other than in China. Uh, so let's, you know, let's, do that. Let's show people all over the world, uh, first of all, how horrible COVID truly is and how universal people's, uh, uh, people's uh, individual stories are.